Hi, welcome to the University of Life in this course, The 12 Loves. And as the subtitle of the course reveals, in this class you're going to learn what kind of love you have and also how to get more of the kinds of love that you want. But there's actually a ton more information than just that. It all started a little over 12 years ago. I remember vividly, I was driving down the road. It was a snowy day in February. And the thought struck me. I thought, you know what? If love is the answer, the way we all say, at least the poets and the songs, and I think we all believe, then why do we fail so miserably both to understand it and to teach it to others? Like our teaching goes kind of like this, be nice, right? Or maybe you pull something from religion, um, from Paul, the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 13, where he describes like the end game of love, you know, it's patient, it, you know, it's forgiving, it's, it never fails. Um, and so this gives us a few clues about love, but it's really, if you try and start from the end and just learn to love by replicating those behaviors, by exercising your patience, by being long suffering, by, by seeing the good in people, you know, thinking no evil, that's, that's, that's good, right? Like good on you for having good intentions and being determined to learn. But I'll be honest, that's the hard way to learn things. It's like, imagine somebody, I'm sure you've got somebody who really tries your patience. And if you don't, then just think about driving on the highway and there's some driver who's like tailgating you or cutting you off or not using his blinkers or driving in the left lane when he's not passing, whatever it is. And you're like, and you're like, oh, that's so irritating. I'm sure you've got some situation like that. And you can try to force yourself to be patient and be like, all right, just take a deep breath. Let it go. I love you, neighbor. You know, you can do all these things and that's good, like I said, but it's the hard way. I'll tell you the easy way is to start at the beginning. Because if you understand how love works, then you know the steps to take to make to make that easy. It makes me think of, I thought of this yesterday, it makes me think of Sisyphus. You know him from Greek mythology? And he was cursed. He's like, he's like, you're gonna push this rock up the hill today. You're going to do it again tomorrow and the day after and next week and next month and next year for the rest of your life or for the rest of eternity, however that goes. And that's a lot of work. And if you're just trying to be patient for patience's sake and not really understanding how love works to help that make it a, a joy, a pleasure, that's what you're doing. Now imagine if we kind of turn the tables on Sisyphus and every day he starts at the top of the hill and there's this big rock and Zeus is like, every day you're going to roll this thing down. Well, now look how you feel. You're like one of those Boy Scouts and you're on a trip to Lake Powell or Southern Utah, Arizona like this. And, uh, and you're like, here's a cliff, here's a rock. Let's roll it off, right? It's, it's fun. And I'll tell you, there is nothing more fun than love. Uh, here's one of the many misconceptions that we commonly hold in our society. I'll tell you many of these. They're, I think they're so fascinating. Most people, makes perfect sense, they want to be loved, right? They want to feel that acceptance, you know, that the feel seen and appreciated and valued. Like that is nurturing and that is really important. But when it comes time to say, hey, how instead of just being more loved, how do you like to be more loving? Well, the, the enthusiasm wanes a little bit. They're like, okay, let's see, maybe, right? Uh, because it sounds like work. And if you're doing it wrong, or not doing it the best way, not necessarily wrong. It is, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of effort. And no matter what, relationships, they're gonna take effort, any kind of relationship, if you wanna maintain it and improve it. But, but it should be a joy, like eating ice cream, right? You're like, oh, I love this ice cream, that's all, it's all just pleasure. Um, and so that's what this course is really designed to do, is to not only show you the 12 loves, um, because after I made that decision, you know, I'm like, I'm like, if love is the answer, how come we don't understand it and don't, we don't teach it well? Well, I immediately determined, I said, I mean, this is what I do at the University of Life. I take like the most important concepts I can think of, the most life affirming, invigorating, exciting, like self-actualization kind of topics. And I deconstruct them down to their simplest thing. And then, and then we build up from there. And I think it's, it, it makes it, you know, a lot of the tests out there like, oh, are you a good lover? Or what kind of lover are you? They, um, in fact, a lot of the research, if you look up love research, and I've, I've read like this many books and research papers and stuff uh, in this process, 
the majority of them, what you'll find is not actually talking about love itself. And the problem is that love is such a big term. It's like, it's like the sky, you know? We, we say, oh, the sky, the singular, right? Like it's one thing. And in a sense, it is. But if you look more closely, what you got? You got the oxygen, you got the nitrogen, carbon dioxide, you got the dust and the bugs and the clouds, you know, the water vapor. Uh, you've got light coming through it all the time. And wait a few hours here, and you're going to see like millions of stars. Well, maybe not millions with all the light pollution, but. Um, but the sky is really made of billions of things, and that's what love is. Love is not one thing. It's, uh, I mean, the taxonomy I came up with after all this research, research and a bunch of brainstorming and categorizing, uh, there are 12 different experiences, actually more, but I group a bunch of them in the last chapter into, into one. <laughs> there would be like 25 of them if I, if I didn't, I and mean, they fit nicely into that category. Uh, so it's, it's many things. And so I'll show you, you know, what these things are. And, oh, and then the, I was mentioning also a lot of the research you find, it's not about love. It's actually about something that's related to love, and that's relationship styles, like how you relate, how you communicate. One of the most famous is the four love languages. Now five, by the way, it's been revised, and I think much improved. Uh, so, you know, and that's all interesting and it's good. But a lot of it is um, it's descriptive. You know, you take a test or whatever, and it says, oh, you are B. You are D, you are A. Uh, it's, it reminds me of the Disney princess tests, right? And you take your little test and you're like, oh, please let me be Belle or Jasmine, please, please, please. And, it, and you take it and, and it gives you a result and like, guess what, you're Rapunzel. And you're like, oh, I'm so excited, I'm Rapunzel. You guys, I'm, I'm Rapunzel. Um, and it's fun, it's kind of, it's, it really is just entertainment, right? But people are so fascinated with themselves, and you should be. You should be excited to be you and who you're about. We'll talk about more of that for sure in, I think, number six. Love, love type number six is, that's a prominent piece. Um, so you should be excited and stuff, but, it, but the main problem that I'm getting at with a lot of this love research, which is actually just relationship research, is like I said, it's descriptive. And it says, you are here. And it's gonna put you in a peg and say, you know, you fit, that's what you are, period. And like I said, that's interesting, it's kind of fun. Maybe it raises your awareness a little bit, like, oh, I really like expensive gifts, so maybe I should ask for them more often, <laughs> right? Or maybe yeah, you should be nice to people so they'll give them to me. Or, or whatever, or or maybe when somebody says something nice to me, I should realize, really to them, they think that's a gift, even though it was cheap. <laughs> Didn't even cost any money, cheapskate. Uh, and, and maybe give them the, so those things can be helpful. But this is not what I like to do at the University of Life. I like to do things that um, do not merely inform and stop there, as fascinating and interesting as that is, honestly. I would rather take another step. I don't want to just inform you, I want to transform you. I want to transform your life. I want to say, you know, where do you think you are on the scale? Okay, right there, great. You know, you could be here, and here's how, if you're interested. You know, and chances are, a lot of these times, you're like, you know what, sounds a little scary, but I'm intrigued, or those rewards sound really worth it. I'm gonna give it a try, it's, you know, and I'll give you an example, examples and everything to help you get there. So that, again, that's what this course is all about, uh, the 12 loves. So if you want to understand love better, you know, and really how it works, like the mechanics of it, uh, along with, you know, I'll touch on the, like, the real science-y stuff, like the different peptides and hormones and oxytocin and all that stuff that, that help form and, and, um, and, and all that research did, I did. Like I started out, I like brainstormed everything I knew about love already. And by the way, I would, probably be willing to bet, if I could bet all of you five bucks, make that 50, I think this is what a lot of you are thinking. And, I'll, and with some of you, I'll be wrong, I'll lose, but with the vast majority of you, I expect this is true, and so I'd easily cover my losses. This is the reaction I get most often when I start talking about this research to people. You know, their reaction, is, is, it looks like this in their expression and some of the things they say. It's like, eh, I already know what love is, I don't need to know anymore. I've felt it, you know? And yeah, you've got your experience, and you do know what love is to a degree. Um, but in 
And so I did all my brainstorming and mapped out and categorized, and I thought, okay, time to hit the research and find out what I'm missing. And wow, I found some of the coolest things. So a lot of what you'll get in this class is curated information from some of the coolest, most interesting, smart, you know, Eric Fromm, Robert A. Johnson, Jung, you know, other people, um, even some Freud, some M. Scott Peck, some some Beatles, some Bible, some, you know, all these amazing sources through the ages. And uh, maybe some James Taylor, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, so I've curated a lot of this information, got a lot of really great quotes. So I just put it so succinctly, like you can't miss it, like Tony Robbins and, you know, everybody. Um, and so you'll get a lot of that. But then also what happened as, as I brainstormed, and especially as I thought about how do I teach this? How do I show the steps? Um, there's a lot of original material that you won't find anywhere else. So if we made that bet, you know, you'd come in thinking, oh, there's probably not that much more to learn. But guess what? There is, because even if you're a love researcher, you've probably been researching the relationship styles. Those are things you can measure, you know, and love itself is kind of an abstraction, even though it you know, definitely turns to concrete action as well. Uh, and so there's probably a lot of stuff. And even if you know a lot of the things here, I'm sure there's other things that I found and put together that you've never found. So if you want to understand love better and get excited about it and know what to do about it, you've come to the right place. This is good. And if you're just adamant, you're like, Psh, I'm not going to learn nothing new. I'm just going to waste my time. Um, then maybe you don't want to take the class. If you want to re improve your relationships, you've come to the right place. If you want to build new ones and know how to not only see the good in other people, but get them to see the good in you, you've come to the right place. You're going to get a lot of information on that. Or maybe you're not like that at all. Maybe you don't want to go to any more effort to like love people and make them feel good. Maybe you're waiting for your handsome prince or your beautiful princess to come and rescue you and love you just the way you are, which actually is um, one of the first things that love really does do, but it is not the only thing. It does not stop there. So uh, if you're waiting for that, you're like, then, then send them and, and tell people, hey, you guys take this course so you know how to treat me and whatever. I can't tell you what to do, but, um, but anyway, the one the one thing that consistently, like all the love research that I, researchers that I read, the one consistent finding and assertion and claim they make is that love must be learned. You can't just divine it from your existing experience because you're not really going to rise much above the experience you've already got. So it has to be taught. And I agree with them. There's just too much information and there's not enough time to wait for that to happen. So. So I've done all this research, presenting it to you now. Sign up, take the class, do your homework so you can really internalize it and really let it transform you, and you'll be glad you did. Uh, the last reason I jotted down that uh, why you might not want to take this class is because you like the world as it is, this big crap hole of suffering and difficulty and struggle, and you're like, yeah, give me more, I'm tough, right? Um, because maybe you're like, you know, a minion of the devil and you're like, hallelujah, bring it on, more suffering. Or maybe you just got so much time invested in living the way you have lived up to this point. You're like, I really want it to pay off. I'd be a fool to, to cut my, you know, try and cut my losses now. Of course, that's, that's stupid. That's ridiculous. So anyway, I hope that gives you a pretty good overview of the course. By the way, I hope you like my studio. I was like, spring comes way too late. So it's much sooner down here on the Utah, Arizona border. And I was running around, you know, riding my motorcycle and I found this spot. And I'm like, I don't need my studio. I'm gonna record right here. So I think it's pretty cool. I hope it adds some interest to the class. So, all right. So hope we'll see you in the next one. We'll get started. We'll review the 12 loves. I'll explain what they are, how they work, what you can do about it. You know. Um, I'll in between the videos, you know, I'll have some resources to help you kind of figure out where you land and, and where you want to be and what it would take to get there. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.